hello everyone welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to discuss about the other stages of inflammation that are the subacute stages and the chronic stages then we will also discuss about the chronic inflammation and the chronic pain syndrome in the previous video we have discussed about the acute stage of inflammation if you haven't watched that video so please go to that video and watch it so now without any further delay let's get into it so first of all we have the subacute stage and we will also discuss about the chronic stage so we are going to see it from the book so here uh, you can see that in the subacute stage this is the stage of the proliferation repair and the healing in acute stage we saw there was inflammation but now in the subacute stage we can see that the inflammation is now decreasing so here you can see that because of the vascular changes that were taking place in the acute stage there is some progress to the healing in the subacute stage so here you can see that there is a removal of noxious stimuli all right and then there is a growth of the capillary bed into that area there is collagen formation granulation tissue is being formed and but this granulation tissue this new tissue that is formed is very fragile so this can be very easily injured and while you are managing with the physiotherapy so you must take a great care of this tissue because it is very fragile so here you can see these were all the steps of the healing that the noxious stimulus has removed so this is also a healing because after that the healing will take place the growth of the capillary bed so in this way the repair process would be stimulated then the collagen formation granulation tissue so these are all providing the stability to the tissues now let's discuss the clinical signs so here we have the decrease in the inflammation so the inflammation is decreasing here and then the pain is also present here but the pain would be synchronous with the tissue resistance it means that you would feel the pain in the region of tissue resistance as i've shown you in the previous video as well that in the early subacute stage what you can see is that the pain would only be felt in the area of the tissue resistance when you can say the tissue is stretched beyond the normal range of motion so only then you will feel the pain now let us take a look at the physical therapy goals and interventions for the phases of rehabilitation in the case of subacute stage so here we can see that uh, the interventions that are taken at this stage they are referred to as a phase 2 interventions all right so phase 2 in this case there is going to be moderate protection as the inflammation has significantly decreased so here we are going to provide the moderate protection and the controlled motion it means that we are going to allow the patient to do some activities but they are in a controlled way so now what kind of interventions we can take here so first of all we have to develop the mobile scar so that it cannot be ruptured or so that the lesion cannot occur very easily so here you can see the development of the mobile scar so uh, what can we do to maintain the development of the mobile scar we can perform the selective stretching mobilization manipulation of restrictions all right so mobilization manipulation and the stretchings can make the scar mobile as you know that this is a stage of healing so what can you do here is that you have to promote the healing so that the healing or the repair can occur speedily so here you can see we can promote the healing by the non-destructive, active resistive, open closed chain, stabilization, muscular endurance, cardiopulmonary endurance exercises and carefully progress the intensity and the range. So these are all the interventions we can take to promote the healing. And why we are improving the muscular endurance? So because you know as the injury was because of the intolerability of the muscle to the repetitive work. So in order to improve the endurance of a muscle we are also using the muscular endurance exercises. Okay now let us discuss the subacute stage from the nose. So here you can see there is decreased inflammation. So inflammatory signs are very much less here and then we can observe the pain that is at the end of the available range of motion. So we can see the pain in the tissue resistance as I've shown you all right. Then we have the pain. So the pain here is basically only when any two of the conditions are met for example in the case when the newly developed tissue is stretched beyond its tolerance so when you're gonna stretch that tissue beyond the tolerance so this uh, so you are gonna experience the pain because as you know that the newly developed tissue is not as strong as the uninjured tissue then we have another case in which the pain can also be experienced so for example if the tight tissue is there and you are stressing the tight tissue so definitely you are going to experience the pain and that pain would also be in the region of the tissue resistance now what is that condition which is limiting the function in this stage so basically as the muscles are weak 
on the test we can see that the muscles would be weak all right so this is basically the cause of the limited function and you should know that what are the causes of the limited function as we have seen in the acute stage that the painful movement and that painful movement was in turn because of the altered chemical state so this was causing the muscle guarding and that muscle guarding was leading to incomplete range of motion all right and then we will also discuss about the chronic state that what happens in the chronic state which is limiting the range of motion now let's see the duration of the subacute stage so this stage lasts 10 to 17 days it means that 14 to 21 days after injury when the acute stage is gone but if we talk about the duration of the subacute stage in the tissues with the limited circulation for example if we talk about the tendon so in this the subacute stage can last up to six weeks it means that it's going to take more time because of the decreased circulation now let's talk about the chronic stage okay now let us first discuss from the book so here you can see this is the chronic stage and this chronic stage is basically the stage of maturation and remodeling so it is a remodeling stage of what of the tissues that were formed in the subacute stage so now there is a maturation and the remodeling of those tissues here you can see this was the granulation tissue so now the granulation tissue is going to be mature in this stage okay now let us discuss about the tissue responses and characteristics so we can see here the maturation of the connective tissue then we have the contracture of the scar tissue as you know there is a myofibroblastic activity that takes place during this chronic stage that is why this would cause the contracture of the scar and then there is also the remodeling of the scar and in the subacute stage we saw that there was a collagen deposition all right the collagen formation was there in the subacute stage but that collagen was irregularly deposited it wasn't that organized so in the chronic stage you would see the organization of the collagen so the collagen aligns to the stress now what are the clinical signs in the chronic stage so there is absence of the inflammation and the pain would be felt after the tissue resistance so here you can see as i've shown you in the previous video as well and here again i'm going to show you that in the late subacute and the chronic stage you would see that pain is felt approximately halfway through the tissue resistance now let us look at the physiotherapy goals and interventions for the phases of rehabilitation so here this is going to be referred to as a phase 3 in which there is minimum to no protection all right and then in this stage the patient is returned to the function so return to function means that such goals are set that when the patient would achieve it so the patient would return to his function it means that the patient would regain the original state the functional capability his functions would be restored okay now let's see what are the goals here so basically in this stage we want the scar to be increased in its tensile quality so increase tensile quality of a scar and this can be done by the progressive strengthening and the endurance exercises so this can increase the tensile quality of the scar then what we can do is that develop the function independence so here as i've said that there is return to function so return to function means that we would develop the functional independence so that the person can regain the function for this case the functional exercises and the specificity drills they would help the patient to regain the activity okay now let us discuss it from the notes so here we can see in the chronic stage there is maturation and remodeling and as i've told you that there is no inflammatory signs so inflammatory signs are absent all right then we can observe the contractures and adhesions and the muscle weakness in this stage which can limit the range and function of the muscles then the connective tissue strengthens and remodels in this stage as i've told you so they are going to remodel themselves in response to the stress on them so now on testing what we can see that when we are testing the tight structures at the end of their available range so the patient would experience the stretch pain so there so this is basic so this is specific kind of pain that the person would feel and that pain is a stretch pain so as i've told you that this pain would be halfway through the tissue resistance so this is basically what is the stretch pain now the functional limitation is due to the muscle weakness poor endurance and the poor neuromuscular control so these are all basically contributing to the limitation of functions Okay, now let's see the duration of the chronic stage so the chronic stage lasts six months to one year and this depends upon the tissue that is involved and the amount of the 
damage that the tissue has undergone. Okay, now let's discuss about the chronic inflammation. So the chronic inflammation is also regarded as the overuse syndrome because this is basically the state of prolonged inflammation. So there is the inflammation for a long period of time and why it is so because if it is if the tissue is continually stressed beyond its ability to repair so there is going to be the prolonged inflammation because the tissue is now not able to repair itself because of the continued stress which is beyond the ability to repair then the symptoms here in the chronic inflammation are number one the increase in the pain so the patient would experience a lot of pain and there is swelling and the muscle guarding would be there then this stage lasts for more than several hours after activity then the patient would experience increase in the stiffness after the rest and this would increase progressively as long as the irritation persists then there is loss of range of motion 24 hours after activity now let us discuss about the chronic pain syndrome so this is basically a state that persists longer than six months so it means that you're gonna have the pain that you would feel for longer than six months and this pain is of such a type that it cannot be linked to any source like irritation or inflammation so you cannot say that this pain is because of any inflammation or irritation or any other source and this pain can lead to the activity limitation and the participation restriction Okay guys, that was all about the stages of inflammation and the, we have discussed about subacute stage, chronic stage and then we have also discussed about the chronic inflammation and the chronic pain syndrome. I hope you found this video helpful. It took me so much time to prepare these notes for you. If you like this, let me know in the comment box below and thanks for watching.